Hello, my friends. This is Eric Parker with One Number Tableau Experts. And in this week's video, I want to cover um, what are some different uses for layout containers in a Tableau dashboard? Uh, what are some tips that you can use to use them more efficiently? What are some gotchas to look out for? Uh, so let's go ahead and dive into it. I think the first thing that I will say is that I've had a complex up and down relationship with layout containers. I feel like early on, I was like, oh, these seem kind of cool. I could be interested in that. And then eventually I was like, whoa, you're totally cramping my style. You're forcing me to lay things out in this particular order. Kind of went through a layout container hating phase, I would say. Uh, and then I've kind of slowly come around to a mutual respect, appreciation for, and, and now I use them very frequently. So I hope that if you're stuck in that place of thinking layout containers are dumb and you don't want to use them, um, that we can help show you the light a, a little bit. All right. So here's some of the different kind of tips and tricks that we'll be looking at uh, throughout the course of this video. All right. I've got a dashboard that we will use for our example. And the first thing I want to do is talk about, uh, you know, I use containers sometimes just to avoid having objects which are floating, right? Like this info button up here in the top right corner is a floating object. Floating objects kind of freak me out a little bit uh, because when you publish to Tableau Server or Tableau Cloud, sometimes they kind of scale or end up in a different place than you thought they would, and they just don't look the way that you would hope. I'm a big fan of just having tiled objects entirely, if possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put the, the info button in a layout container with my title. So I'll grab horizontal layout container and just temporarily put that side by side with my title. Okay, quick side note here, uh, if you're ever curious, like, eh, am I selecting a container? Am I not? That dark blue border around a container object, that's your visual cue that you have a container selected, unlike just a standard object like a text box or a worksheet where it would just be a gray border. Okay. So let's go ahead and pop the uh, title in there. And then what I'm also going to do, now I'm going to get my info button, and let me just hit the drop down to switch this from floating to tiled. We're going to put that in here. Okay. And then actually, just to make sure that my title ends up getting centered, I'm also going to put a blank object on the left side of the title. Okay. So right now, things are not looking so good, but we're going to fix that. Um, so one thing is that I'm going to change the entire background color of the container to match the gray background color of the title. Okay. So one way to do that is click on the, the background of any object that's in the container, double click on the handle at the top of that object, and if you double click on the handle of an object that's in a container, it will go from just having that object selected to the entire container. Now I'm gonna pop over to my layout menu and I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down to here and I'm gonna change my background color to that same gray. Okay, now how do I make sure that the text gets centered and that the blank object and the info button are the same size? Um, something that's also um, specific to layout containers is that you can edit the height or width of an object to be the exact number of pixels that you want. So what I mean is I'm going to hit the drop down here and I'm going to say edit width on the blank and I'm going to tell Tableau let's make this thing 50 pixels wide. I'm going to click on the background of my info button, hit the drop down, say edit width and then say 50. Okay. Note that a regular uh, um, object that's not in a layout container like this worksheet, there is no option to edit width or edit height because it's not in a container. Let's go ahead and shrink this back down. This title doesn't need to take up so much space. Uh, maybe a little taller. Okay, cool. So that's sort of, you know, use case number one, uh, avoiding floating objects and setting the heights and widths to be the exact thing that you want. Okay, uh, one of my favorite things is to take something like summary tiles or filters and then put those in a container as well. So maybe I'll throw a horizontal container just below the title. Okay. And let's go ahead, I'm gonna put store in the container. And one thing I want to point out, it's really hard to drop objects in the layout container when it's not very tall, right? Notice that I'm having a really hard time getting that blue border to show up when I'm trying to put item category next to store. But if I make the layout container exaggeratedly large before I drop an object in there, it makes it so much easier. You can see that blue border now, and I can just drop that filter in the way I need. Okay. Um, so on top of just having all these objects collected together so that they're easier to move around my dashboard as a single unit, uh, the other thing that's nice about putting objects like this in a container is I can make them all the same width, okay? So for example, I'm going to double click on the weekend filter so I get the container selected, hit this drop down, and then say distribute contents evenly. 
And then the cool part about that is if I ended up putting another filter in there, I don't need to, but if I did, it would continue to make all these objects the same width. Okay. Uh, we're getting some screen real estate eaten up by this color legend. So that's another thing is I wanna tackle, um, how could we get that into a container to go along with this title? So it's right here, but it's not floating. It sort of naturally just fits in with what we're already doing. Um, so we'll do that in just a moment. One thing I just wanna point out really quick is if you see this info button up here in the top left corner, uh, maybe right corner, I don't know, <laughs> for you. Uh, we host Tableau classes every month. The basics of Tableau, intermediate, Tableau calculations, Tableau prep. We feel really strongly that nobody should have to go on their Tableau journey alone. And there's a lot of nuance and a lot to learn in Tableau. And there's tons of great resources online. That's a great way to learn one off. But it's also really helpful to just sort of learn from an expert in sort of a longer session. And, and that's what we offer. So if you want to join me or my colleague, Ollie, in one of our upcoming classes, we would love to have you. Again, you can uh, check that out up there in the corner. Okay, so let's get this weekend color legend uh, into in with the title here for this worksheet. Okay. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put a horizontal container in here. I'm going to copy the text for the title of that sheet, and I'm actually going to bring that into this container as just a text object. And then I'm going to throw the color legend to the right of that. Okay. So now I'm going to hide the title of the worksheet down below, and it looks a little funky because uh, you can see like in my tree map, the background of the title is white and the background of the sheet is white, but up here now, the background of the title is gray, but the background of the sheet is white. So what I'm gonna do actually, I wanna put these, I wanna put this and the little title bar that I've created now, I'm gonna put them into a single vertical container, vertical container uh, together. So I'll put vertical container here next to my bar chart, drop the bar chart in there, click on my text object, double click to grab the whole container, and then I'm gonna drop the uh, title bar in there, okay? So let me now click on the bar chart, double click to get the kind of overall vertical container, go to layout, and then set our background to white. Okay, so now it just sort of looks like a single, you know, seamless worksheet. Um, I'm gonna tinker with this a little bit. Uh, single seamless worksheet. One kind of interesting nuance to look out for with layout containers is that they don't have outer padding by default. Uh, meaning, notice the tree map has a little bit of gray space between the edge of the worksheet and the edge of the dashboard, and that object up above does not. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, well, first of all, let me show you this. If I click on the tree map, you'll see that there's outer padding of four built in. But if I get the container up above selected, there's no pad outer padding. So I'm gonna go ahead and just crank that up to four. And now it should effectively look the same as the bottom. Okay, cool, getting there. All right, uh, so one other big thing that I wanna show you is that a layout container can allow objects to expand and contract, or it's gonna seem like appearing and disappearing to your user. Let me show you what I mean by that. I'm gonna put this bar chart in here, um, sales by store. Let me just uh, make this a little bit shorter. I'm gonna hide the axis, hide the title, hide the field labels. So let's say what I wanna have happen is I can click on an item up here and then it will filter the bar chart to represent, you know, what was the sales like in these stores for whatever item I've selected. I deselect it and then it goes back to, sh um, it actually, it disappears entirely, okay? So I'm gonna go to the dashboard drop down on my toolbar and actions. I'm gonna add an action. It's gonna be a filter action. And so what I need to do here is set my source sheet to just be sales by item, set my target sheet to just be sales by store. Uh, let's call this, you know, item to store sales filter. And I wanna set this up so that when I select something in the tree map, it updates the sales by store worksheet. And when I deselect that object, I want it to exclude all values, basically have that worksheet down below go blank. So let's test this. I click on fish and chips. It uh, filters the two restaurant down to just the two restaurants there. Um, I deselect and it goes blank. So it's kind of working. It's kind of not. I just realized I should probably show the labels if I don't have the axis. Let's do that. Okay, so good news, bad news. It is appearing and disappearing, but the tree map is not expanding to utilize the extra screen real estate. Uh, that's because these objects aren't in a layout container. If they were, 
Let's do that. I'm gonna put a vertical container in here next to my tree map. So I'm gonna throw the tree map in there and I'm gonna throw the uh, bar chart in there. Now the cool part is that in a container, as long as the object, as long as the height or the width of an object is not fixed, right? If it's fixed, this little pin shows up as white. As long as it's not fixed, then that means the object can expand and contract, you know, in this case, based on a filter, for example. Okay, let's get rid of that there. Um, okay, so you might think, well, uh, why would it be fixed, right? Okay, so one reason would be if we did what we did at the top where we specifically edited the width or height. Another is if you, at any point, if you take an object in the container and just like, oh, I'm gonna resize this, that is fixing it in Tableau's mind. So notice this isn't fixed, but this is. So if the objects are not appearing and disappearing the way you think, I would just double check that none of the objects in that container are fixed, okay? Uh, and if you've seen any videos about, you know, swapping worksheets with a parameter, for example, they are also using a layout container and, you know, putting multiple sheets in there that could then be controlled with a parameter. We've actually got a video on that. I'll link that uh, in the description down below so that if you wanna check that out. Uh, you can. So um, thank you so much for following along. I hope this video was informative. I hope for those of you that are like, ah, I don't know about containers, that maybe it gives you some ideas for where they could be valuable. Um, we drop videos like this every week. We would love if you follow along and subscribe with us. Um, so thank you for being here and we'll catch you again soon.